This is the Acer Predator Helios 300. It's a gaming laptop that I've been using since October 2018 as my personal daily driver. Now this laptop holds a special place in my heart as well as in the Indian gaming community. That's because it's one of the first laptops that used to be heavily discounted by Flipkart and which allowed many Indian gamers to get into mid-range or high-end uh, PC gaming, at least by Indian standards. There's an unboxing video on my channel also, you can check it out, uh, I'll put the link below. So after one and a half years of heavy gaming, how well has the Acer Predator Helios 300 held up? Let's find out in the video. What's up guys, my name is Iptesh and you're watching the Iptesh Loves Tech. Guys, if you're new to the channel, then definitely consider subscribing and turn on notifications. And you can also follow me on social media at the All Star Deep on Instagram and direct message me all your queries and I'm always there to help you. So without any further ado, let's start the video starting with the build of the laptop. So this is what the top of the laptop looks like. It has a very gamery aesthetic. As you can see, it's black in color. It has a lot of scuff marks and the printer logo in the middle with two red accents. But the red accents don't light up. And uh, picking up the laptop, as you can see, it is a pretty thick laptop. From the size, you can get a uh, notice of that. And uh, when you pick up the laptop, it is pretty heavy at 2.7 kilos. Now the top of the laptop has a little flex because it is made of plastic over there. On the back you have the red accents and the back exhaust. It looks very gamery. And on the sides you have the I.O. that is the power port, the two USB 2.0 ports and a headphone jack with two LED indicators. And on the other side you have uh, the full size SD card slot, USB 3.0, HDMI, USB Type-C without Thunderbolt and Ethernet. So overall being such a thick laptop there is one advantage that there is plenty of I.O. and I have no complaints regarding the I.O. of the laptop. And guys, despite of thousands of openings and reopenings, the hinge of the laptop feels remarkably solid even now. Alright, now let's flip the laptop and look at the bottom. As you can see, there are plenty of vents and you have four rubber feet. You have separate compartment for the 2.5 inch hard drive caddy. And you have also another compartment for the RAM. You have two RAM slots and one is populated with the one stick of RAM. And once again, you have a lot of vents. You can see the fans below. The fans suck in air from the bottom and exhaust from the back. And the speakers are located down below. So as long as you have some space in between the bottom of the laptop and the surface where you keep and you turn on Dolby Digital, the sound is pretty good. All right, now let's take a look inside the laptop. As you can see, it has a pretty standard layout. You have got stickers on both sides of the trackpad showing you the features. And you have got a pretty large trackpad. It's a plastic surface and you have a standard keyboard layout with a numpad. And the laptop deck also feels pretty solid. Okay, now the, since it has a standard layout, it is very easy to type on it. As you can see, the buttons are all close to my fingers and I can easily reach everything. And even the trackpad is just near my thumb, so I can easily use the trackpad. No complaints over here. So the keyboard has a red LED backlighting and the typing experience is very good. Ever since I purchased this laptop, I have not been using any external keyboard. I have been using the laptop keyboard for everything, for typing, for playing games, heavily. And the laptop keyboard has not disappointed me at all. In fact, I have enjoyed the typing experience a lot. Also, even though I did not think I will use it so much, but I have actually used the numpad quite often. Talking about the trackpad, it is very nice. It is pretty big and that's why I can use all my finger gestures very easily. Three finger gesture, two finger scroll, pinch to zoom, everything works pretty well. It does not have Windows Precision drivers but it has Elantec drivers and it is pretty good enough. Now let's talk about the display of the laptop. So this laptop comes with a 1080p IPS display at 60Hz. So this is the biggest improvement that I saw coming from my previous laptop. The display really blew me away. The colors are very deep and saturated. Contrast is great. It is not the most color accurate display but playing games on it is a breeze and watching movies I love it. Also this display has a matte finish so it does not show reflections and uh, that's great. And also since this is an IPS display, when you look at the laptop off angle, the colors and contrast is still maintained pretty well. So lovely viewing experience. Now let's talk about the most important part of the video, the performance. The reason why I purchased this laptop back in 2018. So this laptop comes with the Intel Core i5-8300H, which is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU with a TDP of 45 watts. It has 8 gigabytes of 2666 MHz RAM, which is in single channel. And as discrete graphics, it has the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti with 4 gigabytes GDDR5 graphics memory. Now the Intel Core Coffee Lake processor, that is 8th generation, 
uh, notebook CPUs were actually a big improvement over the Intel Core uh, Skylake and KB Lake processor is 6th and 7th gen. In fact, the Intel Core i5 8300H in this laptop is better than previous generation's flagship notebook CPU that is the i7 7700HQ, uh, which says a lot. Now this laptop doesn't compare with the new AMD 4000 CPUs that are coming out but for 2018 this was actually one of the best CPUs for uh, notebooks that you could purchase. So the Core i5-8300H, let's see how it performs today. So guys in the last few months my laptop was overheating like crazy. The CPU was going over 95 degrees centigrade and I was getting blue screen errors whenever I was playing games or doing any kind of heavy work. So the laptop was opened and cleaned and repasted with new thermal paste and now the temperatures are down. As you can see the laptop has so much dust and the dust had clogged the vents. So guys one advice always clean your laptop every 6 months and try to keep it in a clean location where there is less dust. Otherwise, over time, your laptop will start overheating, which is not good. So guys, I already knew the i5 8300H is a pretty hot CPU. So from day one of purchase of this laptop, I had this laptop undervolted. Now, undervolting is not a bad thing. In fact, it is a very good thing. It's a good practice. And this laptop has been undervolted using throttle stop software. And the undervolted profiles have been provided by Upka Upka from the Azure Predator group on Facebook. I will have the link down below. So it mainly has four profiles that is performance, benchmark, ultra battery and battery and normally I use the battery profile when I'm doing any kind of low level task or something which is not intensive and going into the profile as you can see in the battery profile there is a 1.35 volt undervolt applied and the clock speeds are kept low at 2.3 gigahertz that is the base clock because that's enough for what I need for low level task and when I'm playing games I use the performance profile which has the same undervolt applied and the clock speeds are increased to 3.5 gigahertz on the first two cores and 3.3 gigahertz for the next two cores and when I'm exporting a video or doing video editing I use the benchmark profiles which has the full 4 gigahertz clock speed applied on all cores link to this throttle stop is given in the description now this is the Acer Predator Sense software which allows you to control clock speeds and apply overclock on the graphics card so it has auto max and custom profiles available which you can set according to your need and in the GPU profile as you can see it has normal faster and turbo profiles to apply the specific overclock that you need and uh, going back into the fan control it, it is currently at auto that is silent profile because it's not doing anything intensive in the custom profile you can set your own clock own fan speeds and when i'm playing games and doing benchmarking or in kind of video editing i always set the fans to max at 6000 rpm because it gives the best temperature and that's why the best clock speeds so max profiles when i'm doing any kind of intensive tasks and auto silent profile when i'm doing any kind of regular task with the undervolt applied at all times so this is my setup i always use this laptop with the undervolts applied so i edit videos with the filmora software filmora version 9 and it does not have the best cpu gpu utilization algorithm but uh, i use it because it's easy to use but overall timeline performance is pretty good and scrubbing through the timeline it's pretty smooth given that uh, the video is at full resolution and has chroma key applied and all kind of LUTs applied so overall the timeline scrubbing performance is pretty good and to export a 7 minute video like this it takes me about 12 to 13 minutes which is alright I guess now as for gaming performance this laptop does pretty well with gaming as you can see at 1080p resolution at medium to high settings it can give me 60 fps even now even though this is, these are some of the older games I do not play too many games right now as I don't have the time to play but overall the gaming performance is pretty good but going into 2020 I don't think this uh, GPU that is a 1050 Ti is recommended for playing games anymore at 1080p 60fps you at least need a 1650 for getting 1080p 60fps at high settings at in most games right now in 2020 but overall this laptop performs pretty well in good pretty well in games and I am satisfied for some games like Far Cry 5 you may have to drop the resolution to 900p or drop the settings to like medium or low but I don't care too much it's it looks good enough for me so I'm satisfied with the gaming performance most of the games I get like 50 plus FPS and that's plenty for the 60 Hz display anyway so it's good enough for me. And guys I also stream with this laptop with the built-in webcam and it does pretty well and it is decent. I have no problems. So streaming with this laptop is pretty good enough. 
and guys after cleaning the laptop and applying new thermal paste temperatures are down by 20 degrees centigrade on average it is not going above 75 76 degrees and the performance is amazing after the cleaning so guys clean your laptop every six months now the one thing about the laptop that is not that good is the battery life of it uh, i hardly get about uh, max to max like three hours of battery life with this one uh, with light web browsing and and uh, brightness turned down with uh, obviously the undervolt profiles turned on uh, that's because the intel core i5 8300h is a pretty hot cpu and uh, it gets pretty hot uh, under load that's why the under voltage profiles are very important for me uh, with the under voltage profiles on uh, battery saver on uh, with chrome that are browsing the browsing the web with mozilla firefox which is more efficient than chrome i get about uh, three hours of runtime but getting like three hours of battery life after one and a half years of heavy usage I'm pretty satisfied because I already knew the battery life would suck in this laptop. So overall the Acer Predator Helios 300 has held up pretty well and has sufficed most of my needs of video editing and uh, uh, gaming. But the, but the question remains should you purchase this laptop in 2020? So guys I would say if you find this laptop for a deal of like 40,000 rupees then definitely go for it. Other than that guys I would say do not purchase this laptop in 2020 or any laptop with this particular Intel and uh, 1050 Ti combination because uh, the, I feel the processor is pretty old now and the graphics card is older so what I would say is stay away from Intel laptops in 2020 because the AMD 4000 series CPUs are just way 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 better in efficiency as well as in performance so wait for the AMD 4000 series processors I'll make a video on it explain the processors but uh, this laptop has held up pretty well for me and I'm gonna use it for the next two three years maybe but in 2020 I would say not purchase any Intel laptops instead go for AMD laptops only get this if you get a very good deal of like 40,000 42,000 rupees then only go for this laptop I feel in 2020 you must always go for anything like a Ryzen 5 4600H or an Nvidia GTX 1650 for minimum discrete graphics and uh, even though this laptop has lasted pretty well and I'm still gonna use it I won't recommend it in 2020 that you purchase a laptop with this configuration unless once again you get a great deal all right guys that's it for this video thank you for watching i hope you liked it if you liked it then hit the like button if you did not like it then hit the thumbs down button comment down below about what you feel about this laptop once again you can follow me on social media that all start deep and direct message me all your queries and i'm always there to help you also if you're new to the channel then definitely hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications so that's it for this video guys i'm the and i'll catch you in the next one peace